So, Christian, I appreciate you coming up today, reading our scripture for the day. Okay, so Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. 4 through 9. All right, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments I give, I give to you today are, on your, are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you Lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door, frames of your houses, and on your gates. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my sermon for the day is about faith, family, and country. I know when uh, I was first told. Uh, or basically asked my brother Gary if I would fill in for him. I had a more positive message in mind, but due to the recent world events, we must stray just a little bit from time to time. Everybody knows about eight days ago, a terrorist attack in Israel occurred. That we watched the news over the last few days. Israel, of course, now at war. The news has been so graphic about what's been going on with the atrocities that have been happening over there. And, and we haven't seen this for years in a lot of cases, you know, the, the way people are being sacrificed and, and all that. We know this country is key to our religion, not only our religion, but so many other religions. This attack sometimes feels personal to a lot of us because of our faith. We feel deeply and pray for the innocent, the hungry, and even the displaced. We pray that this war is resolved soon, and that uh, for those in power to make the best decisions guided by God. This has been referenced uh, to Israel's 9-11, a lot like ours. And we know how we felt when this occurred to our, in, to our country. How many of you immediately prayed to God? Or even uttered the words, oh my God. Prayed for your family and then prayed for your country. I ask you... Uh, when asked what is most important to you, how often would, would you answer faith, family, and country? If so, in what order would you place these? Well, our scripture today is basically an overall is to remind us of who God is, uh, what he has done, and the amazing opportunity we have to respond to him with love. It is, to remind, it is a reminder to tell God's story well to all people and especially to our children. So that in difficult times, we, our children, and future generations will pray to God for guidance. So let's share a little information about Deuteronomy. As, as you hear the message today, remember how God has expressed his kindness in your life. And then commit yourself anew to trust, love, and obey him. I don't know if anybody knows, but Moses was the author, and it is believed that Joshua will help finish that after his death. It was written around 1407 or 6 BC, and it was on the east side of the Jordan River in view of Canaan. And my Bible has another way. Has anybody heard of monotheism? monotheism? Everybody knows about this. Okay, If you don't, it's a belief in one God. This was a distinctive feature of the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew religion. Many ancient religions believed in many gods, but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of, God of earth, the only true God. This was important insight for our nation filled with people who believed in many gods. Both then and today, there are people who prefer to place their trust in many different gods. But the day is coming when God will be recognized as the only one. He will be the king over the whole earth. That's Zechariah. 14.9. As far as our faith in 1 Corinthians 8.6, yet for, for, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for, and for whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. Our faith 
which is a personal commitment to God, is the most important relationship because it will help us guide us through all phases of life. Of course, back to our Deuteronomy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. How many of you believe in and can identify the gifts our God has given to each of us today? I know for me, it was Wheat and Donna and that little youth program up there in Sheridan. And then later on when she had our daughter. And now then, you know, having Colby and CJ in our lives. And I know each of you can relate to those same sorts of things. How many of you have been emotionally lost, financially lost, or even over different relationships that you've had. Then you reached out to God through either prayer or opened the Bible and found the answer that you needed. Or maybe just by opening that Bible, you were placed on a different path from His Word that made you get through what you needed to. Right? For some of us, first started to pray to God, it may have felt or even feel strange to pray. As you continue to pray and mature, which we mentioned last Sunday school, with your connection to God, you'll be able to understand His answers better. In Matthew 21, 22, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. Practicing prayer with your faith is a great way to form your personal communication with God. Prayer is so very important. There are so many ways to pray, and each of us should take the time to show our love for God in prayer. Often we find that prayer, praying is difficult in the worst of times, and for this, Romans 8.26 says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes from us with groans that words cannot express. I have to ask, where do you pray? And I wrote down a few. Church, work, when you're fishing, on the deer stand. Maybe at the table, when you're driving or sporting events. I don't know how many of you find yourself praying just almost everywhere that you're at, right? I know I've seen beautiful scenery and said, man, that is amazing. And you pray that, man, it's a beautiful thing and thank you for it, right? I would like to ask how many of you are part of the prayer text group. And for me, it certainly reminds us several times a day to pray to God for a variety of blessings and concerns. For those who need these prayers from each of us, I think this is just one way God has placed on our minds throughout our week. And it's a great use of technology. And I know I would love to see an EMP hit sometime. But I know that this is uh, this could be good for us. Thank you for sharing, and I would love to see this group this group to continue to grow. God is surely pleased with all forms of prayer in his name. Prayer is absolutely key to your faith and must be passed to our families. As far as my my Bible, it explains uh, Deuteronomy a little more a little differently. This passage provides a central theme. It sets a pattern to help us relate to the Word of God to our daily lives. We are to love God, think constantly about His commandments, teach His commandments to our children, and live each day by the guidelines in His Word. God emphasized the importance of parents teaching the Bible to their children. The church and Christian schools cannot be used to escape from this responsibility. The Bible provides so many opportunities for object lessons and practical teaching that it would be a shame to study it only one day a week. Eternal truths are most effectively learned in the loving environment of a God-fearing home. I believe we can all agree family is one of the most important parts of our lives. And I, I reached out on, on my phone, which, you know, I just mentioned a negative about it. And I found at the University of Auburn, EDU site, the definition of family. The family is a foundation, a foundational institution of society ordained by God. It is constituted by marriage and is composed of persons related to one another by marriage, blood, or adoption. And most of us in here have been adopted. And I'll kind of relate that a little bit in just a minute. The family is a fundamental institution of human society and from, and from God. When we talk about family, we often think of immediate church families. 
But how often do you think of the associations or refer to them as family? Like work. I know I used to call my military family. Or club families. You know, sororities, fraternities. I know I'm a Mason. And if that, if that God fixture wasn't part of that, then it wouldn't be one of my associations. Right? I know each of you believers who have raised or are raising families in the church understand that God is certainly pleased with you being in the body of Christ or the church family. We know that our children grow up, they leave, and we pray that all of them find their personal connection with God and ensure their families choose the same path and find a supportive church. Uh, Theolessians 5, 16 through 18 says, Be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. The reason I brought that up is because of the personal Personally, my immediate family, Don and I, met in the United Methodist Church Group youth program up in Sheridan, Arkansas. We got married, and then uh, a little while later, we added Christian to it. And then into our travels, we have adopted, we've been adopted by a few churches over the years. Uh, Protestant, when there were no Methodist churches available. And just out of curiosity, can any of you answer why there wasn't a Methodist church in North Pole, Alaska? Was it the mosquitoes in the summertime or the cold in the wintertime? Huh? No, Nevertheless, didn't make it that far. <laughs> just didn't go there. Huh? But so we we have moved to different places where you know our original faith, our original religion wasn't available. But that doesn't mean that we weren't adopted, right? Uh, now years later, I'm pleased to see my daughter and Colby with their now three boys in church. Each of our churches over the years including the Church of Hampton, have adopted us to share God's Word. We're thankful for that. Matthew 12, 49 through 50, pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brother and my brothers. For those are for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The... The Apostle Paul often used family terms when writing to churches and individuals about being the body of Christ. Being a part of a church puts us with fellow believers. To have personal connection like family, this allows us to, above all, show our love for our one God. And then, of course, Deuteronomy 6.6 6 says, The commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. And this is basically to share our concerns and blessings. The, con uh, the concerns include members who are going through something that is stressful, sickness, or even death. This is when family and their support uh, is there to support us with con uh, companionship, prayers, or whatever we can do to help. With the dark times, we can also rejoice in sharing our blessings. From the birth of a child, someone sick getting well, and even peace, which I'm hoping for soon. This, uh, bo this body of Christ is to receive and share God's word and to teach our children. A place to tithe and support the church's family and share the word of God within our communities. The following is for the parents here today. And that's all of us or will be all of us in the future. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home. And when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up, that is all the time, right? It's all the time. The Bible basically kind of converts it a little bit here, or at least makes it more modern. The Hebrews were extremely successful at making religion an integral part of life. The reason for their success was that religious education is life-oriented and not information-oriented. And I can tell you, before doing this, Today, I have really been focused on information, right? Teaching CJ and trying to do that in more of an information-based. It, it, is, it is really kind of a unique way to look at life-oriented, right? They use the context of daily life to teach about God. The key to teaching your children to love God is stated simply and clearly in the verses. If you want your children to follow God, you must make God a part of your everyday experiences. You must teach your children diligently to see God in all aspects of life, not just in those that are church-related. 
for those of you who have raised your immediate family, you're not off the hook. <laughs> you're not off the hook at all. There are those of us that need you to keep us in line with God's Word. For each of you to continue to share your knowledge in the Lord so that our church can continually get better. I reference our Sunday school class that I've learned from each of the each of the people that have been involved in that. And if you have not been involved, please, y'all need to, y'all need to come in and listen. I mean, I, I, I think I've got a way about something, and then I hear somebody else speak about it. Well, that's definitely a better way to think about it. That being said, Proverbs 27, 17, and I've had this throughout my life, is iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. That is such a key thing when you were in this environment. My Bible says there is a mental sharpness that comes with being around good people. And meeting of minds can help people see their ideas with new clarity, refine them, and shape them into brilliant insights. This requires discussion, partners who can challenge each other and stimulate thought. People who uh, focus on the idea without involving egos in the discussion, and people who know how to attack the thought and not the thinker. Two friends who bring their ideas together can help other become sharper. And I, I truly believe that. As far as the parents here, we must seek the knowledge and those who will help teach your children the Word of God. Surround yourself and your children with the body of Christ. And we've got, I'm going to say this wrong. Anyway, this is a, one of those scripture verses. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built until we reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Another interpretation is our openness to Christ does not destroy our individuality. The Holy Spirit has given each Christian special gifts for building up the church. Now that we have these gifts, it is crucial to use them. Are you spiritually mature or exercising the gifts God has given to you? If you know your gift, are you looking for opportunities to serve? If you don't know, ask God to show you perhaps with the help of your minister or Christian friends. Then as you begin to recognize your special area of service, use your gifts to strengthen and encourage the church. Earlier in the discussion, I, I mentioned about family. And then I also mentioned about our work families, our military and our club families. Right? Several of us have used these terms. And yet each of these groups, we have found God, we have found God or believers to be present. I know that I have. We try to surround ourselves with those like-minded like folks. Occasionally, we may still need a warning depending on our associations. And the following passage explains, Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. And, and we've all heard the saying here, the old saying, a rotten apple spoils the barrel. Often applied to friendships and with good reason. Our friends, associates, uh, associates affect us, sometimes for family. Be careful whom you choose as your closest friends because you will surely grow to resemble each other. And I can tell you that in the service, if we were trying to get something launched or going, it was a, it, you could see it was like we were possessed to get that mission done, right? And oftentimes you had to step back so that you could become safe again or try to become right again, you know? So and I'm sure that each, each person may, may, have, may have gone through that. The last couple of verses may, have, uh, may help God in honoring, uh, may help us to ensure God is honored correctly and we stay focused. Out of curiosity, how many of you are wearing your lotteries? I think is what they're called. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, it's basically, it used to be a little box that you wore on your wrist or your forehead. And it was uh, to put scriptures in. Huh? Uh, I have one on my doorframe. I still have it in the Yeah? It has that person. Maybe. 
Well, maybe if you don't have that little box on there. How many of you are wearing smart smartwatches today? If you are wearing a smartwatch, can you pull up a scripture on that little box that you're wearing on your arm? In addition to that, have you been able to read a text that asks you to pray? And I know Donna does. I don't have one myself, but she keeps me informed for sure. And this is part of that Deuteronomy where it says, Tie the tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them to your foreheads. This verse is the basis for wearing the I can't see this word. The little boxes basically that contain scripture that the ultra Orthodox Jews tie and <clears throat> tied to the back of their hands and also to their foreheads. And then the last part of this was write them on your door frame of your houses and on your gates. And I was thinking. I mean, we have crosses hung up in the house. I don't know how many folks put that out front, but then the real point of this verse was that we should write God's word on our hearts, which is kind of a profound way of you know, thinking about that. And then I'm going to end this section. Basically, remember, we should love the Lord, your God, with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all your strength. There's no greater pl place to practice our religion than in this country that we live in today. And I know this by having traveled to these other countries. And in fact, I know Donna and Christian have been to Israel, and I've been asking those them questions, right? Because they have knowledge that I don't have. Right? But just to point out some of the things that are still good about our country, because if you watch about our politicians, they will drive you nuts a little bit. But as we watch the, the news over the last few days, and look at Israel, and share the similarities like the mixes of religions. Please pray to God that, that they see peace and come soon to that land. You know, we also have multiple religions in our country, but it's primarily Christianity, right? Almost 75%. So prayer, our, our pray, our involvement will be for humanitarian aid only. And if our country is required to use force, please, God, provide protection to our troops and innocent people. And God, convert the hearts of our enemies, our enemy, uh, forcing them to see your, that you are the God of the earth and to fall in line with your word and your will. Now, within our own country, we are blessed by God to practice uh, religion freely. And our country has numerous strengths in, in its, uh, including Christianity. There are a few other facts that I know that most people know, but I'm going to put them out there anyway. Our First Amendment right practice our religion. Not a lot of places have that, right? but we do. And did y'all know that uh, that Congress, through the H.R. 619 on July 11th of 1955, included the words, in God we trust, on all of our monies? But our Coinage Act of 1873 had it on all of our newly minted coins. So no matter what you do in this country, as you're, if you're moving around, the God we trust is on, on everything there. And I don't know how many of you have been in the been in the service, but if you if you have not been, both at, when you take your oath of enlistment as an enlisted person or as an officer, and you have to recite the words word for word, each one of those ends in the words "So help me God." And the, as many times as I've given that oath of enlistment out when I was commissioned to enlisted folks, nobody didn't say that, right? So it was always it was always pleasing to me to hear those words at the very end because there are just a lot of things in this life that you will not do or cannot do without his help. And let's see, just so you know about our generosity a little bit, according to uh, the Charities Aid Foundation World Giving Index, which surveyed over 1.3 million people in 125 countries, not only do we give money, but 72% of Americans help strangers and 42% of us volunteer. That's pretty impressive. And the United States is still the largest bilateral donor of international food assistance. So those all things are pretty good. Right? In a world that we constantly see the negative, we live in one of the best countries on the planet. And the uh, scripture I'd like to read for that is Psalm 67, 1 through 5, where it says, God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine on us as a nation. Make us strong but peaceful. Make us just but also merciful. Make us prosperous and generous. And at that, say, so let us pray.
Wonderful Father, we bless your name today. When we look back over the, our lives, we can't help but thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for keeping our church family healthy, prosperous, and going strong. Thank you for allowing us as a local body of believers to be used by you to build your kingdom here on earth. We are humbled when we when we consider all that you do that you have done for us. We are grateful for this opportunity to reflect on all your awesome works toward us. Our families, our church family, our community, and our nation. Father God, we love you because you hear our prayers for mercy. You've been down to listen to us. We worship you with gladness as we come before you singing with joy. We give you, we give you thanks and praise in your name. For Lord, you are good and your unfailing love continues forever. Your faithfulness continues to each generation. Thank you, Father. We will not forget you. In your wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Holy Spirit, teach us to value this time of reverent reflection that has been afforded to us by our Heavenly Father. Bring back to our remembrance of all the trials He has brought through us through, how He has protected and provided for us, and how He has graciously poured out his favor on us. Help us to stay focused on how blessed we are instead of complaining about what we do not have. For those of us who have lost the fire we had when we first received the Lord Jesus, our Savior, restore to us the joy of salvation. Help us to pass down to our children our testimonies of victory and triumph through the Father so that his name and glory will be passed from generation to generation. Watch over us, guide us as we leave your house. In your name we pray. Amen.